That bull fever may have run a little bit too hot as Apple downgraded by Jefferies, which says serious iPhone or AI smartphones are two years out of the market, was not wanting to wait for them. And what does that mean for the rest of the market? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to find out in this video. Hope you're having a wonderful start today. Hope you had a wonderful trading day. Today, we're going to be talking about Apple. We're going to be talking about the S&P, NASDAQ, the key levels for them. And also a very special thing, the VIX at the very end of the video got a great meme for all of you. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Good evening. Like I said, I'm Michael. I do all the technical analysis on this channel. I'll be providing you guys today with what levels Apple is most likely going to go to there's a high probability that it catches a rebound but it, because of the fervency of the bulls and where we're at however like we covered in the weekend deep dive link down in the description below where you guys can check out all these levels i'm not going to go necessarily into so minute detail but we'll glance over them but apple today was downgraded by jeffries to from a buy to a hold so it's not actually a sell yet emphasis on the word yet citing near-term expectations for iphone 16 and 17 are too high now there's a lot of things in the market that there traders are setting themselves up for very very high expectations first of all fear and greed sitting at a very we were actually touching extreme greed at the start of the day what is this right for all of you that don't know what this is it's warren but i call it the warren buffett indicator because he does the exact opposite of this and look how much money he's made uh, we also talked about warren buffett in the weekend deep dive so make sure you guys check that one out it'll be linked down in the description below but Warren Buffett essentially basically says, when people are greedy, be fearful. When people are fearful, be greedy. That essentially means that we need to be very, very fearful right now. And as you can see, the markets were following in tandem with that because number one, Apple sold off. Number two, the S&P and the NASDAQ all sold off. And I basically said, look at the NASDAQ to determine what levels we need to be paying attention to, which direction the market's going to be. When I heard Apple was selling off, I was like, okay, well, this is going to be a pretty easy trading day. Just sell the rip the whole way. Made money going on the way down. If you guys want to find out those futures trades, futures trade 23 hours a day. So if you want to take part in that, the link in the description will also be the Discord where you guys can come chat with us, learn more about it, ask in-depth questions. So make sure you guys check that out below but before i go off on a squirrel tangent we can clearly see apples below the 50-day moving average so strike number one and you know the famous phrase three strikes we're out so second strike is actually going to be from this long-term trend line that was established back in the august lows and recent the september lows right so every single month we've established a new uh, higher low and then we've subsequently broken that what does that mean for the grand scheme of things well the trend is your friend till the end and the fr your trend is no longer your friend now, what is your friend is a subscribe button down below if you guys want to check it out along with bell notifications so you know when all these amazing videos come out, keep you updated on the market and all the news. But Apple basically was in a wedge pattern, right? So if we look at this simply as a longer term pattern that it was forming, kind of forming that ascending wedge. I'm not the biggest pattern person, right? I, I just kind of look at 50 day, 200 day moving average and I basically say, okay, you broke this thing, you got two days that you have to get back above it, or subsequently you're coming back down to this target. I don't try to make it very complicated. I don't use super, super fancy indicators, right? Like I talk about Lux Algol on this channel, that will be linked down in the description below if you guys wanna check them out. They're, we're not sponsored by them. I just like using their stuff. Basic, simple, uh, kind of giving me a general, more precise way of entry and exit in the market. But I look at Apple, right? So uh, smart money flow saying sell, RSI is looking, selling crap, uh, gapping down to a fair value at 119. So this is why I'm saying it can actually catch a bounce. But the thing is, usually when you break the 250 day moving average, you have a probability of bouncing and a probability of bouncing is still valid until two day close. So at the time of releasing this video, you guys will actually know if Apple closed above 222.75. That is going to be where the 50 day moving average is sitting. That is approximately for Apple based off of the close, right? Just to there has to do a half a percent. That's not crazy for Apple, especially we've seen crazy fervency buying from Apple. And we can actually look to some of the other big cap stocks to know if that sentiment is still out there. One of them that I love using is NVIDIA. If NVIDIA sentiment is bullish, then semis Apple tech most likely will follow. And as we can see here, that Apple, uh, sorry, NVIDIA is 
continuing bullish during the day that Apple was selling off. NVIDIA was one of the few things and chips were one of the few things that was actually bullish. This is why I'm not discarding the entire bull thesis or bear thesis. However, I will warn everyone that we cover in the week of deep dive, the net exposure for the market is to the longs, right? So the market is the transfer of wealth from the impatience of the patient. And I also say the market's only sole job in existence is to transfer the most amount of money from the uh, mo at the shortest time possible. And thus, it looks at who's more exposed. Right now, the bulls are more exposed. And we got more and more things that we're going to show in this video of how this evolution is changing. The mentality is changing in the markets. And really, Apple is going to be just a chip in the gigantic glacier that is the sentiment of the market, right? If we jump over to the S&P real quick, again, I'm not going to dive into these levels super, super deep. But as you can see here, we got the 50 day moving average over here, we got uh, the stock up there. And essentially what it means is that we're heading towards this support level that we have here. Us moving down to the support level it puts into contention because we've had such a massive consolidation for all those that know what consolidation is, is when tr you trade sideways for a quite a bit of time. But essentially what that means is that you're threatening a lower uh, low right now. Last week, we spent a lot of time making new weekly lower lows. We didn't close below it, so it wasn't invalidated. But now the question is, as the momentum again pushes that downside, are the bulls going to step up and basically buy? How much buying do are they have in the tank, right? Remember, they're exposed net long on this, so they don't have as much money and fervency to basically go in, right? They're not... The bears don't need to be necessarily right to make money off of this. They can sit on the sidelines and wait, whereas the bulls have to. They're exposed to this. So subsequently going back to this, 56780 was the previous close. If we close below 565.16 on the SPY, and then the NASDAQ is similar story if we close below 477.40, that puts into question is this 50 day moving average over here going to be broken? Are we going to come back and test it? Well, first we got break 477. 477.40 and then head down lower to the 470 number really and that's going to be the indication of where if we're going to be bullish or bearish right so that is what we have to pay attention to this number right over here that 469.67 number do we come back as a gravity pulls us down lower right now the nasdaq is not setting up to be the most bullish thing in the universe and we can look at the two main indicators that tell us if we need to be bullish or bearish. But one of the other scariest things is that the yield curve, which if you guys don't know what this is, it's basically the recession indicator is screaming again, hey, time for another reinversion because the longest in history wasn't bad enough. So let's go for round two, right? And it's just mind blowing how everyone can ignore this. This is just, it, it baffles the mind hasn't officially uninverted. I'll keep you guys updated if it does. I've followed this thing and tracked it all the way since the inversion of 2022. So it's been a long time coming. So going back to what I was saying is let's look at some of those two main indicators that are going to give you the best bang for your buck to understand if you need to be bullish or bearish market. First of all, Bitcoin. I said if Bitcoin is not back able to get above 65,000 again and again and again and again. I keep saying this because Bitcoin just loves bashing its head. Like, look how many times it's going to keep bashing its head against this price action. Right now, you're seeing right around 65. Previously, it was 68. Previous to that, was 68 and something. So, I mean, Bitcoin, come on, man. Just what on earth are you doing? And simply put, right, you, you're bear, closing at the nine. We're looking at possibly having a death cross here where the 50 is going to move below the 200. And subsequently, that's bearish, right? You don't want to keep chopping around. Like Bitcoin buyers have been accumulating and accumulating and accumulating. But the question is, if you've been accumulating this entire region, right? So we're accumulating this entire region. We break down to 49, right? Are they going to be so fervent to buy again, right? How many times do you have to get beat up before you just throw up your hands and basically say, I'm done with this? And the thing is, CERN buyers in Bitcoin may be getting to that point because they've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this rally. And psychologically, it's going to affect them negatively, right? And subsequently, as promised, the meme of the century, right? So as you guys can see, this meme is glorious. I'm threatening World War Three, and the VIX is only 20. You know what? What's wrong with you damn people? Can't really say that for the YouTube audience. But then again, the, the VIX, right? We talk about the VIX till we're blue in the face. And it's just like, uh, maybe 20.
Maybe, maybe, right? Like World War III is rolling around, maybe 20. But the question is, uh, why is VIX pushing up so high when the rest of the market hasn't really sold off? Is this your early warning indicator that we're about to go through Armageddon again? And again, I've been waiting for that trade opportunity around 12. I missed it around 15 again. Didn't really buy into there because I wasn't super confident that it was actually going to do what I thought it was going to do. But then again, the question is, VIX at 22. Tension is in the Middle East. Hurricane about to hit Florida. So make sure you guys got a relative down there. You let them know. Get the, you know what, out of Florida because it just hit Cat 5. So... That one's going to be a crazy one. And the fervency for China stocks, right? As we can see, everyone's going and buying China stocks, but this is pure parabolicness. It always ends the same exact way. So there's a bunch of things going on in the markets that I'm like, okay, you all are lost your mind. Futures last night were not looking pretty either. So the question is, is Apple going to be the first block to fall? Again, make sure you guys check out the weekend deep dive so you can know exactly it's pinned over here for you so you can figure out what secret Warren Buffett is planning out in there. And thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.